you miss Game of Thrones, this may scratch that itch. We are talking Dragon Knight, an epic quest of mythical proportions. This one is directed by Laurie Brewster, who previously directed uh, Lord of Tears. But he returns his attention to the fantasy genre with all the Dungeons and Dragons you can want in a sword and sorcery movie. It's actually got all the hallmarks of a classic fantasy movie you're ever going to want, really. Dragons, knights, magic, you know, heroes. It's all there. What's the story? Well, it focuses on a group of heroes. Uh, we have this dragon knight, who is our, kind of our main character, who is a kind of a knight of a fallen order of years past. You know, it's one of these where the dragons were all kind of like roaming free. We had this, they had the Order of Knights. He's the last one. And he is joined on a quest by this uh, hopeless kind of young guy who just wants to kind of like impress him. And a kind of a, an assassin who uh, once were enemies with this with a dragon knight. And they are trying to uh, find the last dragon to try and convince it to help in this kind of, uh, this this war against this evil kind of army led by... Abaddon, a, a kind of a, a mythical demon lord, maybe, who uh, is kind of controlling everything. It actually has a lot of inspiration. Now, you may be thinking, initially, it's inspired by the likes of The Witcher and Lord of the Rings. But I have to say, as well, it feels a lot like Star Wars and the fact that we have this kind of, like, uh, government or the Empire, this kind of, like, this reigning kind of force with a kind of a... Uh, a, a boss, a kind of head honcho that we never see in the first film, a la the kind of the Emperor, and in this case Abaddon, but he has this kind of Darth Vader-like kind of lieutenant being the, at the forefront here as the kind of the main bad guy, and a small group of rebels uh, trying to kind of cause problems. So it kind of feels like a Star Wars, a bit in a fantasy setting. We've even got the kind of the faceless kind of army of the bad guys in a kind of Stormtrooper-esque kind of style uh, black armor here. It's pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, but this one, you you can feel the burn of the dragon fire as well, because yes, there is a dragon in this movie. Okay, so what do I think works in this movie? So this again, this is a low budget film, so we have to kind of set certain expectations here. But goddamn, I was impressed with the production value of this film. This film actually looks gorgeous. Now, Laurie Brewster, it has to be said, does have an eye for making some interesting visuals. And despite the fact that it's obviously a low-budget movie, I think it's the best possible outcome you can get from a visual standpoint. The camera work here is absolutely on point. And Laurie Brewster really makes every... Uh, scene kind of feel like it's like a work of art in many ways. Very kind of artistically shot movie without kind of falling into it's an art house movie. You know, it's a genre fantasy movie, but it still has a, a certain um, kind of a visual flair. A lot of times I was actually reminded of John Bullman's Excalibur in a lot of ways as well. That kind of, that kind of visual style in, the, in, in some respects, but at a lower budget. Um... As well to go with this kind of like I think the decent camera work here, the the kind of the the scale of this movie is quite impressive, and it does it. Okay, the story elements here will remind you of things like Lord of the Rings. We kind of have this uh, these kind of dark riders that look kind of like the kind of like the the riders of you know the um, Nazgul and all of that. Uh, but you've got elements here like um, the Witcher as well, where kind of like this this warrior and his kind of chirpy chum and things like that. So there's def different kind of fancy elements at play here. Uh, and, and it all to kind of that meld into this kind of like this one story. It does feel like it is a first part of a probably a trilogy. I would have thought, um, but you know, I think the actual thing like the costuming is fantastic. I mean, the, you know, time and effort has been spent on this on this movie. I recently reviewed one called um, uh, Werewolf Castle, also a fantasy movie, but from a different production company. And this one, the just the kind of the. Attention to detail looks that much more, you know, impressive here. The hair, the kind of like the, the costuming, everything just looks a little bit more prestige, even though this is, again, a low-budget film. It just looks kind of like impressive, especially because of the uh, the, the budget, obviously, that this movie has. Yes, there, there's computer-generated effects. Yes, the kind of the dragon is computer-generated. And no, it's not brilliant. But nonetheless, you know, I, I'm forgiving of kind of... Uh, lower budget special effects to a certain degree. It's certainly not bad, but obviously you can see kind of some budget restraints here. 
Um, I think our characters are quite well defined. We have our three kind of central protagonists, all of whom I feel you kind of get to know over the course of uh, of the movie. And the bad guys do look do do look and kind of feel quite imposing. And I think it was quite a wise move that the Abaddon kind of character we don't see, but we kind of hear lots about it. it kind of you know it evokes kind of a certain amount of kind of fear. Um, and you know the location shooting here is excellent. I think there's you know a lot. There is a lot of walking in the woods, which we'll come on to. But we do get some you know uh, internal shots of halls and things like that. It looks impressive. I've got to say it as well. Uh, the music as well. I think for the most part, with one exception, uh, I think you know really kind of underscores the kind of the drama here. And there's some fairly impressively you know scaled battles here. The end culminating in a kind of a large kind of scale battle between two armies. Again, kind of like helped with computers to kind of like pad out the numbers. But again, for the low budget here, it looks pretty impressive. Okay, so what doesn't work? Well, let's talk about tone. Uh, because this was the thing I feel, if this movie missed the mark, this is the, what, it, what it missed the mark most on. So when I was watching this movie, um, we have our Dragon Knight, who was our main character. And he's played by this the Scottish guy. And uh, the way he talks, he's like always really shouting and gruff. And I was just thinking, he sounds like, if you're familiar with a YouTuber called The Critical Drinker about when he goes on one of his rants, it sounds like like him through the entire movie. He's always like hyper, kind of like over-exaggerated, kind of angry and kind of shouting his lines. And, I thought, and to be honest with you, I thought we, this was going to be a parody. When I was started watching this movie, it's so overcooked, the kind of the line delivery of this guy. I thought, is this a parody movie? Because like, it just seems like it's like, you know when, if you've watched um, 300, where Gerard Butler goes, Sparta! It's like that, but for the whole movie. And then you add to that this kind of like comedy relief psychic character who is essentially there for kind of, you know, jokes and comedic relief. And then we have this kind of like weird sort of chirpy music that kind of plays over it. I thought, is this a comedy? Is this like a fancy comedy? But it isn't. Everything else is completely straight. And it's, it's such a weird juxtaposition. I get that they want the comedy relief character or this kind of psychic. That I understand. Um, even though I think it, it kind of cheapens the mood a little bit. Um, but the, the guy kind of just growling and kind of shouting his lines... He looks the part, don't get me wrong, but man, that is overcooked. Um, considering when everything else is, is played like dead straight, it's weird. Uh, it's, you know, you have a lot of these kind of like um, other characters, to be honest with you, who are not the best actors. They are some kind of weaker performances, like, you know, here, but there are some good performances, like, but it's a little bit of a mixed bag. But this guy just kind of stands out. This kind of our main character as well. So that was, I think, the most kind of disconcerting problem I have to say here. It was, it felt so weird and really sort of stuck out. And like I said, there's the, the music for the most part is good, but they have this kind of weird sort of comedic kind of tune that he plays sometimes. And again, when you're trying to take this guy seriously, you just can't. Uh, what else? So I think I have to say the the the, the second half of this movie slows down a little bit and the, the the pace of it just kind of drops off and even though i was impressed with the kind of the visual richness and kind of style here it kind of got there's lots of walking in woods um uh, in, in this kind of like especially this second act but even the kind of even the climax of the movie this big like battle and stuff a little bit overuse of slow-mo it kind of slows it down where it kind of isn't particularly exciting in places um, so the kind of the, the, the fight choreography isn't brilliant all the time. So it, it, it kind of the pace of it just kind of just drops off a little bit, I have to say. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a decent movie though. It's, it's a decent fantasy film. And I have to say one of the better efforts, one of the kind of the more impressive straight to kind of VOD, video, DVD fantasy films I've seen in recent years. But I feel there is um, improvement to be had. Uh, I, I would like the kind of the main actor to kind of just like dial it back a bit. It, that would that would be my, my main thing here because it's so distracting. Um, it's so distracting. 
But if we can kind of get that, and you know, it's ultimately there's no real surprises in regards to what happens. Uh, it's it's not going to reinvent the wheel with any kind type of uh, surprise storytelling. And the, the plot is more or less kind of what you think is going to happen. But it's still, I would say, an above average straight to, straight to video effort for me. So I'm going to give this one a six out of ten. Have you seen it? What do you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.